Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and ghouls of all ages, to another episode of Shadow Running on Empty. Once again, it's just going to be the two of us tonight while we take you on another tourism trip around the Metroplex in our latest episode of Living Lore. Easy, how you doing this week? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm very proud of myself of just thinking of that tourism pun for the two. You know, I... Mm -hmm. I so yeah. Tourism. Yeah, tourism. So yeah, I'm just kind of basking <laughs> in that one right now. It's... uh Living high on those laurels. <laughs> it's going to get me through the rest of today. You know, I really needed that win. <laughs> <laughs> but we are doing good, man. Where are we off to this evening? Ah, this evening we'll be taking a rich look at Tacoma. I know everybody likes to hang out down at the docks, and that's where we'll be taking a look today. Where the slogan is, where the aroma is money. Interesting. Okay. Not sold on that one, I have to say. Y yeah, I, you know, there's a certain level of pretension that just comes pre-attached to that phrase, I feel. I was just thinking of have you smelled sweaty money before? It's not good. Yeah, that's the thing. Is as well as like most of the money probably smells like sweat and Nova Coke. So, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is what I I can't remember what it, I remember seeing seeing like a news article that was talking about how like ninety six percent of of one dollar bills in circulation are able to be tested positive for some type of cocaine residue or some kind of drug residue yeah some yeah. type of drug residue on it and i was like america the land of the free let's go <laughs> <laughs> hey man you gotta survive that nightclub life somehow well, that just means that all of the coke fiends are, you know, cheap bastards, because everybody knows that the only way to actually do it is with a crisp Benjamin Franklin. Mm. Otherwise, are you truly living? Yeah, are you truly living? Do you really, really live the high life? Because if you're not using hundos, mm, we see where you're at. But yeah, the smell of money. I'm not, uh, it's, I don't, I'm not a, not a fan of that one. Well, they say the aroma. So if you that's even to walk worse. in, if you had to walk into what a, a like a, a Yankee candle or whatever, would would you look for the uh can't the money aroma? Oh, the candle? the money. Oh, yeah, my my three <laughs> my three wick money candle that's burning in the background. Uh, that's fair. Mmm, smells like a two dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at what they got. We're, again, looking at a lovely population density of about 375,000. Of course, humans being at the top at 71%. And then elf at 11%. Yeah, okay. I could see that. Uh, orc is actually at 15%. Ooh. Right? And then dwarf, troll, and other rounds out at 1% each. As is tradition. As is tradition. You again have a high corporate affiliation at almost 89%. That makes sense because this is supposed to be down in the dock area. So you got to think they're going to have a presence. Which I feel like lends into the credence of why the orc population would be, density would be so high. It's because they're all probably dock workers. But what are the elves doing there? That's a good question. Maybe we'll find out. As I've always been led to believe, elves hate manual labor. So I'm <laughs> very confused about this. By every reference of pop culture everywhere, <laughs> elves are not big into manual labor. <laughs> so for decades, Tacoma has lived in the shadow of downtown Seattle. Seattle was white collar to Tacoma's blue. Seattle was tall, majestic skyscrapers to Tacoma's polluting smelters and paper mills. Seattle was rich and Tacoma was poor. Residents of Tacoma could do little more than endure Seattleites' snide remarks about Tacoma's aroma. But now... Which is, which is money, according to them, so... Well, now it is. <gasps> oh, oh, I see, I see. Bef before it was paper mill and smelters. So. Before it was the, the aroma of poor, and now it is the <laughs> aroma of money. You know, with that context, maybe the slogan actually makes a little bit more sense. Mm-hmm. 
Tacoma's just really proud of its glow up. All right, <laughs> I don't. I don't think we should take that away from them. Well, Tacoma's day has finally come. Ever since 2039, the megacorps have been buying up land in the district at an unprecedented rate. Citizens of Tacoma can now gaze proudly at the shiny new skyscrapers under construction while bustling freighter traffic sails in and out of the city's expanded port. Despite the rapid growth, the charming turn-of-the-century downtown area has been meticulously preserved as have many of the historic reminders of the Night of Rage. Remember, that was the whole, we got to kill all the metahumans. Yes. That took place mostly in Tacoma, or was Uh, felt the hardest in Tacoma. I see. Now, so prior to the Night of Rage, do we know, did Tacoma just, in general, was that where like the highest meta population density was within the Metroplex? At the time beforehand, before Seattle kind of becomes the metroplex and you had influx of refugees fleeing the areas of the Midwest from the uh, the NAN becoming mm-hmm. its own nation. Right. And so mass exodus of people. You had a lot of people come to the California and Seattle area. Mm-hmm. And at the time before it becomes the metroplex, it's just Tacoma, Everett, and downtown seattle oh I it's see. not the metroplex yet and so right. you get a bunch of refugees and then with your ucos government being all the way on the east coast you're not really getting a whole lot of federal aid you kind of have to you know fend for yourself yeah and with seattle still being seattle regardless of the metroplex mm. like they were saying i'd imagine that most of the blue collar hands ended up in uh ever yes so that makes sense Mm -hmm. it's still nice to know that they kept the uh turn of the century look for tacoma so it wouldn't or tacoma not everett sorry i meant tacoma not everett ah so in the current shadow run setting Mm -hmm. the coma that you would that you would visit now would be relatively the same as what you would see just with some slightly larger buildings with megacorp logos on it and the uh, shipyard port would be a little bit larger than what it currently is right i get you they didn't go for the full scale future city sellout no they didn't go for the full glam up that downtown seattle went through gotcha no glass pyramids in tacoma no okay well maybe part of one but still but now that that's all behind them Mm because the future is looking the looking up Smells like money. Mm -hmm. District looks bright. Don't be surprised if you hear a snide joke or two about downtown Seattle instead. (laughs) Turn in the other way. Uh, In most parts of Seattle, the mafia and Yakuza fight on fairly even terms. In Tacoma, however, Yakuza clans dominate, with the mafia reduced to the minor role usually reserved for the sulfur rings. Yakuza dominance stems from the far-sightedness of one of its leaders who 22 years ago, or more than that, if we're going by the the current timeline, it'd be closer to now 50-ish years ago. While everyone else was buying in the downtown and Bellevue districts, which end up being some of the richer districts once the Metroplex is established, This particular Gumi, who was then only a mid-level accountant for one of the clans, saw the golden opportunity, and he began to secretly buy up the cheaper Tacoma property with Yakuza money. This bold move enraged many of the other Yakuza clans, but his life was spared thanks to the chaos of the Night of Rage. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so he gets lost in the shuffle that's you know to be fair they did have bigger things to deal with <laughs> a little bit yeah after the vast destruction of the riots tacoma property went for sale at next to nothing mm. who knew so then he bought up the rest of the neighborhoods yep 
Foresight gave his clan a stranglehold in Tacoma and eventually led to his ascension from just being the mid-level accountant to an Oyoban. There you go. Listen, <clears throat> I think we all agree and understand on the basic concept of buy low, sell high. <laughs> <laughs> right? Of course, the Mafia, in an effort to counter Yakuza power, has uh -huh. adopted very violent tactics, going mm -hmm. for bombings, assassinations, drive-by shootings, all aimed at Yakuza holdings. Apparently well, are very commonplace down in Tacoma. Oh, I see. Still? Or was this like while it was coming back from the Night of Rouge? Nope. Nope, still. Since Yakuza firmly holds on to Tacoma. Mafia so, not a big fan? Mafia's not happy about it. Mm. I mean, who's supposed to work their docks? Some yaks? Come on. Uh, that's very fair. If I know anything about the Mafia, they love doing business at the docks. So, <laughs> If movies and television has taught me anything. <laughs> yeah, I can see why they would take it so personally. Mm-hmm. I would just feel like that would be the logical place to like buy into property in general though. Like I it's 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 weird to me that it was seen as a bad move to buy property into what would probably be the largest port city in a state that is now next to, you know, the mm -hmm. ocean coast and is the major trade port of the entire western half of the united states pretty much at this point like if not mm -hmm. that then san francisco maybe right but yeah that's it's just weird to me that like tacoma is the port and everybody's like don't buy land there it's like wh wh where else are you gonna <laughs> buy land so here's why i think that comes into play and, and why it happened is okay at the time right before i mean this is before the metroplex gets formed no one right. knew that the Tacoma docks were going to be expanded from the megacorps coming in and pouring money into the area to build bigger warehouses, more places for infrastructure, things like that. They also couldn't foresee that California would not join the COS or UCOS and uh, go its own direction become to become free a free state. state. Right. Mm -hmm. And thus oh, okay. you lose that big port that's already there in right. San Fran. So there was that. And then I think around the same time the Metroplex is getting going, there's also the uh, competition that you're getting from Portland in the tier importing mm -hmm. goods as well, with using right. Portland as a, their own large port uh, for goods to come in as well. So A land of port, if you will. A land of port, yes. So you have all this going on, and so the, the Mafia already has a stronger hold in what is downtown Seattle. Right. And downtown and Bellevue are the two areas that saw the, the biggest growth from megacorps coming in. And so, of course, mm. organized crime is going to go there first. Right. Because these are the areas that are getting developed faster. And they're not looking at outlying areas just yet because they want to break into the hot markets before they get completely established. Right, for sure. Okay, I could see that. That's why you got one guy who just happens to be looking the other way going, huh, how about this place? <laughs> but what if? <laughs> mm, and it, yeah. it, it's a big gamble, obviously, because they wanted to kill him, but it ends up paying off. I would say so. Uh, so the strong arm tactics from the Mafia have caused many of the smaller Yakuza front companies to close down but have done very little to increase the Mafia's own power in the district. So basically what they're doing is they're just kind of destroying small Yakuza startups so that the bigger ones that are already there established are just then gobbling them up and consolidating more power. Uh, I see. I mean, <clears throat> it is a valid strategy. I'll give them that. Of course, the task of establishing a Mafia foothold in Tacoma has fallen to one Matt Uhill, who Mafia Don O'Malley flew in from New York. It's a good name. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked about the Sulpa Rings, too. Yes. And they also operate in Tacoma successfully on a much smaller scale. I mean, I feel like successfully on a much smaller scale is pretty much the MO of the Sulpa Rings, right? 
yeah they they like to run really small like gambling dens yeah little drug operations here and there nothing major like they're not moving big shipments or anything from the port yeah. so that's why they're probably largely overlooked right yeah that's what i'm saying so i i feel like that should just be the slogan mm -hmm. uh, of the uh <laughs> of the sulpa rings it's successfully and undetected that's that's the mo <laughs> <laughs> so far so good uh tacoma has more than its share of thriller and go gangs the most fearsome Go Gang is known as the Spike Wheels. Ooh, good name. And it controls the T Tacoma stretch of Intercity 5. Ooh. Most gang members are trolls who ride specially enlarged combat bikes. That sounds terrifying. Some of Tacoma's fiercest thrill gangs are the Fiercest Surgeons, the Milton Dark Angels, and the Lakewood Giants. Well, you gotta be careful with that. Games Workshop might get pissed about that one. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're about to get a nasty email. <laughs> what are their gang colors? Cream and dark green? Oh, oh no! no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but the Spikes uh, operating in Tacoma is a, a big deal. The Spikes are one of the larger Go Gangs. Uh, one that is known in uh, the the Shadowrun lore a lot too. Uh, they don't like elves at all. I feel like the only people that like elves in the sixth world are elves. <laughs> it really seems that way, doesn't it? Really it really kind of feels that way. I mean, I feel like the tears don't help, you know? No. Like, I feel like, like being when they isolationist is... a little bit. Yeah. I feel like yeah. when they established the tears that they were kind that the rest of, uh, the sixth world is kind of like, well, you know, fuck them then. Let them have like, like all right, well, you, they can just go live in the tears. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get them there anyway, so just you know, just let them go. What do I yeah, care? Right. Who's gonna stop them? So I, I, I feel like uh, you know, disliking elves is the norm in the sixth. Finding people that like the elves is the exception to the rule now. Instead, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the spikes are notorious for not liking elves they get into uh scraps with the other all elven go gang called the ancients they you know what that fight each that, other a lot that's a really good name for an all elven gang though mm -hmm. i can respect that yeah you have to think how crazy they have to be to take on an all troll go gang i mean i imagine that they just look like the dark eldar <laughs> <laughs> uh no the spikes uh general oh you mean the ancients i mean the ancients yeah, yeah uh you know what i don't know i'll have to come back to that and look up what their colors are i don't remember i'm off the top of my head lots of leather and studs that's what i'm imagining <laughs> with the ancients with the like spike chain whips and stuff <laughs> uh-huh yeah uh-huh uh-huh but uh by far the most destructive thrill gang are the Ragers of Tacoma's Waterfront. The Ragers? Is that what yeah, the that's... Ragers. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. These young orcs are the sons and daughters of the survivors of the Night of Rage. Ah, appropriately named then. The Ragers prey on people, particularly humans, up what? and down Commencement Bay, all in the name of orc freedom and self-defense. I don't believe that they would prey on mostly humans. That seems suspicious. Mm hmm. Never mind that that's who preyed on them in the night of. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hang on. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with this, easy. I feel like oh, you're just no, looking... no. Yes, making things up. You're gonna hurt your. You're gonna hurt your shoulders reaching that hard, my friend. You better. You better do some stretching first. <laughs> No, that's fair. I agree with those guys. Fuck those humans. They probably deserve it. Oh my god. What have humans ever given to society? <laughs> what have we what have we ever contributed, huh? All the cool stuff comes from metas. Oh, okay, I see. Hey, we don't we don't know. There's probably a good chance that elves established civilization back Ugh. in the fourth world, all right? Who's you know say? what? Who's to say they wouldn't claim that anyway? Oh, they they definitely do. They de they're like the Romans never heard of them. <laughs> the Romans, you mean my second cousin Vinny? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vinny Roman, you know. Vinny Roman. He's part of the ancients. <laughs> 
I don't know why they got Brooklyn accents now for some <laughs> Washington know, uh... elves, but hey, oh, oh, who knows? We got some soprano elves, you know. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Gavalagoo. <laughs> They're from the New Jersey chapter of the. <laughs> Up there, they're they're called the ancients. The <laughs> <Duh> ancients. <laughs> their their sigils just an elf, just a an elf grandma eating some stromboli. <laughs> so what is it? Who would How bother? We, who, who would, would bother? bother? Uh, we do it for her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we get here? Well, what were we I, talking about? <laughs> you know what? Let's keep it in Tacoma. Oh, the Rangers. That's, we're, that's the where Rangers. we were. The Somehow Rangers. we got there from here. So uh, ge- geography and demographics for Tacoma. Uh-huh. Tacoma is a large, flat district that juts down into Puget Sound. Mm. The few existing hills oh. were leveled off to form one of the best deep, wide harbors in the Pacific Northwest. Engineers have further deepened and widened the bay, a complex series of docks, waterways, warehouses, and railroads carry out tons of commerce every day without trouble, far exceeding Seattle's capabilities. Is the fact that they're adjacent to Puget Sound why you were saying that they're kind of next to a glass pyramid? Yes. I see, okay. Most People that live in the Tacoma area are middle-class workers who owe their allegiance to one of the mega corporations. Which are the major mega corporations that have set up shop in Tacoma? Easy. Uh, you've definitely got Renraku, uh, Shiawase, Mitsuhama, and Wujing. All of them would definitely have holdings in the Tacoma area because all of their most of their goods are getting shipped over from across the Pacific. So they're definitely definitely going to have holdings there. You might not see much of Aries in the Tacoma area. Okay, interesting. I'm trying to think of who else you probably wouldn't see. Neonet. Yeah, that also makes sense. Yeah, most of the ones that you're going to see that are going to be in the Tacoma area are all going to be based over in Japan, China, uh, or Russia for our big megacorps because all their stuff has to come across the pacific what about um what's the one that uh tyler's favorite dragon was involved with waffleer yeah uh, well, you probably wouldn't the... see Seder crop Seder crop okay. i mean maybe for some heavy industry i i have to think that you would most likely see more of Seder crop engineers like strengthening the dock or something like that as opposed to actually having large holdings in the area uh, i see more of a, a part of the infrastructure of the area right gotcha that makes sense let's move on to our favorite who's running this this joint this district well, the the yaks but who have they put in <laughs> as their stooge one ava w pratt is the interim mayor of tacoma uh-huh. That changes, obviously, as time goes on. In 2072, uh, we have Mayor Francesca Sippel running on an environmental platform of cleaning up the district, both physically and socially. And I assume that she probably only made it one term and then uh, we got a new mayor. She was cracking down on violent crime in the area and her crime task force focused mostly on the Yakuza activity in Tacoma. Ah. Uh, and it was later discovered that she was bought and paid for by the Ganelli family to help ensure they can wrestle Tacoma away from the yaks. That sounds about right! <laughs> <laughs> Mafia meddling within politics? What? Never heard of it. I've never, never seen that ever in my life. <laughs> uh Uh, And then in 2076, we have Mayor William Duffy learning from the past with Francesca having chosen a side and it cost her everything. The Yaks saw to that. He chose the biggest bully he could find and serve. Good old Federated Boeing. (laughs) So So he decided to go the interim corpo route instead, I see. Yeah, and what better way than Federated Boeing? That's fair. I, I, I believe... 
within the modern world, Boeing's headquarters is in Seattle, isn't it? I believe so, yes. That checks out, then. They're not in Tacoma. I think they're down in the Fort Lewis area. Ah, I see. If I remember right. Well, that'll be for another episode, you see. Jeez. <laughs> exactly. But yes, so the current mayor running Tacoma as of 2076, Mayor William Duffy, who has sided with Federated Boeing and isn't trying to stick his nose into the organized crime problems of Tacoma at all. Good old Bill. He knows He knows where he stands. <laughs> Not wanting to get assassinated. He stands firmly in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> no drive-by mafia guys, bombings, uh, or ninjas for him. Exactly. <laughs> so you went in to look at the economy. So let's take a look at the economy in, uh, economy in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. It used to rely solely on heavy industry and trade. But the recent real estate and construction boom is broadening the district's economic base to include more private businesses. Oh, interesting. There are 18 major factories in Tacoma, mm -hmm. manufacturing everything from steel girders and paper to seagoing freighters. Federated Boeing's metal refinery, where precious metals and alloys are created for production of their aircraft is the largest and most important factory in the district. Whenever I think of a smelter plant, mm -hmm. I can only ever think of the episode of The Simpsons where uh, Homer's concerned that Bart's that Bart might be gay, so he's trying to like t take him around to do and We he work takes hard, him, we, we play, play hard. hard. <laughs> oh, dude, oh my god, that fucking scene every time. <laughs> Absolutely Homer, why did you bring me? Why did you bring me to this steel mill? Why did you bring? Me I to don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Oh, it's so good. Uh, all right, I'm gonna leave you here at this intersection. You're gonna stare at this billboard. I'll be back in 18 hours. <laughs> oh man. Uh, also, shout outs to John Waters, one of the best cameos in The Simpsons. Man, mm, mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> me and me and my friend <clears throat> me and one of my friends like kind of the basis of our friendship when we first started hanging out was the simpsons mm. and so to this day whenever if like one of us whenever we see each other we always just look at each other and we go zap zap <laughs> wow zap <laughs> anyway oh, sorry man. Anyway. So they work hard, they play hard. <laughs> they yep. work hard, they play hard, yes. Uh, Tacoma's modern port is capable of handling commercial ships of all sizes. Artificial waterways and the widened entrance to the Puyallup River have reduced traffic congestion around the port and provide enough room for the largest freighters to dock without difficulty. Every year, 400 freighters from all around the Pacific Rim dock at Tacoma. But easy, what if one of them were to say, hypothetically, get stuck horizontally in the canal? <laughs> what would uh, they do about it? You know... Because I have a theory of how, the, of how to easily solve the problem, but what would okay, yours be? Okay, uh, so obviously... Modern problems require modern solutions. Yes. And in, 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 in a time in which uh, magic exists, I would uh -huh. assume that some water elementals... Elementals would push would the be... boat! Dude, <laughs> let's go! The same exact thought that I had. You just summon water elementals and they push the boat, man. Right? It's super easy. You don't have to do anything. There's no turning. You don't have yes. to wait you know, forever for the boat to turn. Oh. Just get some good old water elementals and they'll Move the shit for you. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes, 100%. All right, fantastic. That's what <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, man. Modern problems, modern solutions. <laughs> I'm glad that we've accounted for this insane hypothetical that would never happen. <laughs> no, no. Clearly, everybody that is the captain of a large freighter that is carrying goods is a capable individual. And understands how a canal system works. But yes, no, exactly. Yeah, we're not throwing anybody under the boat as it were. Hey. Mm. Hmm. Some people might have said that the scenario was sink or swim. 
<laughs> of course, not it's not just an intake port. Seattle does have goods that leave as well. Uh, and waiting on the docks for export are tons of Seattle, Yukos, and Nan goods. Two of the most important es- exports are food from the Salish Sea Council Farms and aircraft from Federated Boeing. Shock. I know, right? When, Shock and surprise. When, when your nation takes over the entire Midwest, yes, your biggest export will be crops. Who knew? Oh, no, I was talking more about the Federated Boeing. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Of course. Yeah, yeah. The Bible Belt crop import is just like, yep, that checks out. But Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love the. And where do they fly out of? Well, probably uh, Federation Boeing International Airport of Boeing (laughs) Aircrafts. Located on Boeing Field. In beautiful central Boeing, Washington. Yes, they've bought the town. (laughs) They've just federated it all. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> uh, so, so walking almost anywhere in the district, a visitor will be amazed at the number of sparkling new corporate towers, such as the Shiawase Corporation Complex. I always love the names that corporations use for buildings to try to make them feel less corporate. Mm-hmm. But they sound far more corporate yeah like oh i work at the complex and i'm like that why (laughs) (laughs) hey would you rather work at the complex or Uh the compound oh okay see uh, i don't like the like (laughs) inferred intentions of either of those locations though (laughs) that's the problem i don't know what would be the lesser of those two evils to be honest (laughs) with you they're both pretty bad (laughs) I probably a complex just because like <laughs> the implications of a compound are way too wide. I feel like I can narrow the margins a little bit in a complex. Uh-huh. Yeah. But a compound dude, anything goes in the <laughs> compound, dude. I was gonna say <laughs> uh both places if you boil it down, you're drinking Kool-Aid. It's <laughs> so many Gatorade container Gatorade coolers of Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, the new buildings are the most obvious signs of a real estate boom that has made many Tacoma residents rich beyond their wildest imaginations. Yay. We're higher middle class. Yes. Okay. Tacoma's what? Sorry, I just, as a quick aside, Uh huh. I feel like I never really cared about the concept of real estate. Mm-hmm. Until I played the Yakuza games. Now, <laughs> let me explain. So, okay, Yakuza do. Zero. In Yakuza Zero, you play two different storylines. There's the Goro storyline and the Kiryu storyline. Mm-hmm. Each of those has their own like dedicated B B plot story. Kiryu's is that you get involved in real estate, and so what happens is you get a property, and then you have to go around and do side missions in the world to get people of the different positions to run the property for you. So there's like manager, security, uh, janitor and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you do side missions and you unlock these characters to manage the property. And one of the characters that you get um, is Nugget. Nugget is a chicken that Kiryu wins at a bowling alley. (laughs) Okay. And then he puts a he puts a he puts a tie on him, and uh, you use him as a manager for your real estate property. This uh-huh. made me so invested in real estate, dude. I <laughs> like I didn't know that all I needed was Nugget in my life to make me care, uh-huh. and I was like, I get it now. <laughs> Amazing! It, it all clicks in. So Amazing! Uh, that's my backdoor recommendation for everybody should play the Yakuza games. They're pretty fucking good. <laughs> I've heard good things. I've never actually played them, but I have heard good things. Highly recommend. You can usually start with zero. You can usually find it on sale for like six bucks. Pick it up. Yeah. Okay. And how appropriate as, you know, uh, so, and uh, hey, controlling Tacoma. You know, it it all, I bet you Kiryu runs Tacoma based on the experience I've had. His business, his real estate management abilities are pretty good. So 
I think that Kiryu could run Tacoma for sure on behalf of the <laughs> Okay. He's probably who had the second mayor assassinated, if we're being perfectly honest. That's his efficiency. Amazing. Hey, Chummers, if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. If you are listening on Spotify or another podcast streaming service, please rate the episode and share it so we can get it out to the other like-minded Shatterrun individuals. You can also subscribe to our Patreon over at patreon.com slash critical underscore hits. Five bucks a month gets you behind the scenes looks. Also, we'll put you in touch to be able to hear those Worm Talk episodes. And finally, you guys, down in the description, you will find an affiliate link for Drive Through RPG. It's got everything that you could possibly need over there new RPGs, new modules, supplements, adventures. Whenever you're going to check out a Drive Through RPG, just drop that in to the affiliate link, and that would help us out in the long run. And with that, I thank you guys very much. And now let's get back to the show. Sorry. So real estate boom makes sense. A lot of yes, land, yeah, lot of yeah. land to build up that they got really cheap. So, you know, that's how you do. Mm-hmm. 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 So, yeah, uh, obviously uh, it's a big economic boom for people. So uh, let's take a look at the interesting places that you can find in the Tacoma area. Well, we already talked about the smelter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go with our usual mm-hmm. and talk about hotels. Woo! Where are you going to stay when you visit? Mm-hmm. You're going to stay. How about this? You've got Lakewood Comfy Cubicle. Ooh, you had me right up until the end there. <laughs> it's a no frills cubicle hotel. Like most others of the Comfy Cubicle hotel chain, offers reasonable value for tourists on a tight budget. You ready for your coffin motel? Because there it is. Okay, so I was quick to speak. Mm -hmm. Have you seen capsule hotels? Yes, I have. So I assume that that's what this is. That's basically what coffin motels in the sixth world are, yes. I see. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. I know that we had the joke conversation a while ago about them actually being like mortician themed. Mm-hmm. And so my brain still like that's what it automatically <laughs> just defaults to most of the time. But yes, so if it's a lakefront capsule hotel, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'd be all right with that. I think I'd okay. be all right. All right. It wouldn't all be right. too bad. Uh, I love this quote here uh, from a user called Fiddler, or sorry, Find Findler Man. Findler. Oh, okay. It'd be, it'd be more hilarious. If it was Fiddler Man. I really wish it was Fiddler Man. It was because I think we'll just change it to Fiddler Man because. Okay. He, he says, quote, everybody sing, ain't no coffin like my old coffin, the one I used to call home. Okay. <laughs> I like Fiddler, man. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this. Okay. From now uh, on, that's what it shall be. <laughs> I really want every hotel to have some type of sung review from Fiddler, man. Now, like, I wish that that was his thing. <laughs> I would so be great. Su- I would be super excited. Uh, apparently, the manager of the Lakewood Comfy Cubicle is a skilled magician with a pet eye killer whose name is Gouger and has killed more than a few people trying to rob the hotel or harm the manager. Wait, what's an eye killer? I'm so glad you asked. Okay, cool. I'm glad that was a setup. <laughs> it was. This is a big setup. Big, okay. uh, an eye killer. Uh huh. Is a large bird resembling an owl. Sick. Okay. They average seven meters in length and can hunt nocturnally in the same respects as owls. Their sharp talons and the paranormal ability to generate an electrical discharge make them efficient predators. What the fuck? They're electric owls? Yes. They're electric owls. I love it. Seven. Seven meter electric owls. They're those god damn dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Okay, this is my new favorite paranormal critter. What is eye killer? That's fair. How do you spell yes. it? It's eye killer, exactly like you 
E Y E K I L L E R. I can't. Oh, okay. It's exactly just, like it oh, sounds. It's very literal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> these things are fucking dope. All right. I love it. Seven meters in length, though. Like, that's cr- dude. Does it happen by chance? Does it happen to say it's wingspan? Uh, it does not, but you know what I would equate it to, probably? Mm. Have you ever seen um, the harpy owls? Yes. And how disturbing they look? Very fair. Okay. Uh, I yeah. would assume that their wingspan is is much like that. Fair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Very fair. You know, we have um, at, our, at our zoo, uh, the Phoenix Zoo here in Arizona, mm-hmm. We have a exhibit that has a bald eagle. It has two, I think. We have two bald eagles. Mm -hmm. Bald eagles are the most terrifying creature that's ever existed. (laughs) And I'm very glad that they don't hunt human because they could so easily. Dude, they are large. Holy shit, dude. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you go up to it and you're like, oh, that's just me sitting in that tree right now, but, like, (laughs) deadly, if I was Mm -hmm. lethal. (laughs) Oh, man. So, yeah, okay, I'm super down for the giant attack bird, what with the- So, okay, okay, so is this like a- like it can shoot electricity from its body thing, or is this more of like a blanket thing, where it just electrifies itself? Uh, generates an electrical- discharge so i imagine that it builds a charge around itself and then when it hits you with the with the talons it discharges the the electrical buildup so i would go more blanca more blanca okay you know what even cooler because that would be like you can't even try to fight that thing off no damn yeah scary right gnarly i yep who needs a taser when you've got an eye killer (laughs) fucking a dude (laughs) It's a flying taser. Oh, you know what I want to do now? Uh huh. I totally want to try to make a shadow runner. Uh huh. That is just like a paranormal animal tamer, dude. Yeah. And uses okay. them as as the like it's a falconer, but for uh-huh. like some kind of weird para animal. Bro. But he's uh he's a an adept at the same time. Dude, the Nova Possum wrapped in knives. Okay, hear me <laughs> out. Hear me out, dude. So you take a Nova Possum, uh-huh. and then you just take like six butcher's knives. Okay. Tape it, tape it in a ring around the Nova Possum. Uh huh. And then you just have like the most lethal projectile creature. <laughs> Swing it by its tail like a nun. Dude, <laughs> like a oh, <laughs> and then away, and then it just <laughs> takes off, bro. Name your Nova Possum Mjolnir at that point. <laughs> uh, this this is a category we definitely have to come back to. I, oh, dude, I'm making we... a note about this. We're we're talking about this uh, on a uh, uh, on a worm talk. Definitely, dude. I'm adding. I'm, <laughs> I am making the mental list of all of the most of all of these ridiculous Shadowrun characters that we keep coming up with. Mm-hmm. Paranormal Critter Wrangler is like top of the list right now. <laughs> He's just he has just reached the top of the list. I this character sounds fantastic. Ah, uh, so so good, and this is why we have these moments. <laughs> oh man. Uh next on our hotel list, though. Uh, this one's not as nearly as interesting. It's just the Sheraton Tacoma. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? You get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah. As as is the Sheraton slogan. <laughs> but since it since it is in Tacoma, a uh-huh. uh, little blurb about it: More than three hundred metahumans fled to this turn of the century hotel to hide from the flames of the night of rage. They were protected from certain death by the hotel's predominantly human staff, who literally barricaded the entrances of the hotel against terrorist intruders. This moment in the hotel's history is proudly remembered with a plaque and a small museum in the lobby. Dope. So it's the Freedom Compound Sheridan Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like the, it. I, the I Meta like Human it. Remembrance uh, Sheridan Hotel Complex. Hey, you know what, man? That's pretty dope. You know, props to Sheridan. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, uh, there also may be a secret entrance under the Sheridan that leads from the basement to the orc underground you know that would check out Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense 
that's probably where the Orc Underground started. Uh, could have been. A lot of the Underground definitely did get its roots from the Night of Rage and people fleeing to, like, tunnels and... Yeah, to go hide in the ruins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yep. makes sense. That is indeed how it started. Cool, cool. Uh, finally, we Well, have I mean, the... not cool, but, you know. Yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know you're a proponent fan of the Orc Underground. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and then finally for hotels, we have the Tacoma Dome Hotel. Mm. The, the Tacoma Dome is one of the best hotels in the district. Its rooms are luxurious. Its main restaurant, superb. The large solarium is a wonderful place to relax. And the location offers easy access to the district's public transportation but you're probably going to pay out the nose for it. It's very fa- I mean, look, if you're staying in a hotel that comes with a built-in um uh, like a st- solarium. <laughs> like a, yeah, a built-in solarium, dude, like yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be the <laughs> that is a long ways off from uh beachfront ca- uh, capsule fucking <laughs> <Okay>, hotels. <laughs> uh now we go to our favorites, places to eat. Mm-hmm. these are always usually uh pretty good right <laughs> i mean i have to imagine it's going to be like a lot of seafood restaurants right uh well first we've got de Clary's. uh-huh de Clary's is a bar okay it is uh run by one vincent bone crusher de Clary. okay good name uh is de Clary he is an orc uh, it doesn't say... Uh, it does say that Declary is one of the few places in Tacoma controlled by the Mafia. The owner uh, used to be an enforcer for the mob. Uh, okay, now remind me. How does the Mafia feel about metas? Uh, they're indifferent. Okay, that's what I, that's what I thought was the case, but I just want to make sure. I think they were opposed in the beginning... But as time went on, they realized that they can't be choosy. I think I think all I think all humans were opposed, and then the night of rage happened, and then like the not super shitty humans are like, maybe the metas are okay now. Is this <laughs> like they're just people, right? And so <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, uh, we've got Lakewood Shizan, mid-sized okay. restaurant family mm-hmm. style that specializes in Tanzanian Indian cuisine. Okay, I'm down with that. It is run by a family of recent immigrants from Tanzania and the exotic menu even the soy half is excellent. Oh, I'm glad that they threw that in there for, you know, mm-hmm. the soy enthusiasts out there. In the <laughs> soy enthusiasts. <laughs> Oh, next on Soy Talk. <laughs> uh, we've got the Tacoma Purple Haze. Uh-huh, La- okay. Large restaurant and bar. Mm. One of the best first-class restaurants in the district. The mm. Purple Haze offers cuisine that is a wonderful mix of Texan, Atslan, and Pueblo dishes. Why is it called Purple Haze? I don't know. Okay. It's, I, it's a cool name. I just... It seems like a strange name for a Tex-Mex place, but you know... Right, yeah. Apparently, it is a favorite with the area's celebrities. Fair enough. Uh, Then we've got good old Tacoma style. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) This trendy restaurant has a wonderful view of Puget Sound and an excellent Salish menu. The Mm. first-class restaurant is a major attraction for the young and beautiful people, most of whom will go downstairs to the Style Nightclub after dinner okay interesting apparently tacoma style is a favorite hangout for tacoma's mr johnson's <laughs> you uh you gotta be careful when you're saying stuff like that on the internet you see <laughs> i mean for shadow runners <laughs> uh, that's a it's, it's a hell of a statement my friend <laughs> uh that's fair i mean that checks hey listen I believe it was you who, at one point, we were talking, and you and you brought up giving me shit about the concept of the Shadow Runner bar. It's just an easy. That's yeah. what that's what the Johnsons are for, man. 
I guess. I mean, they can say it's a favorite hangout. Whether they're actually there is a whole other question. Maybe yeah, you could get suckered in with information like that. But I, 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 I still think that it's funny that that's. I, I feel like that's the the point of them being there, though, right? The Johnson is your intermediary. True. I mean, maybe you could find a fixer. Very true. Uh, Taurus oh, attraction. Do they, up real next. quick? Yes. Do they explain what Tacoma style is? Like, is that like a lifestyle? Is it a? It, they just say Tacoma style. Tacoma style. Okay. It's a mid-sized restaurant and bar. Right. Apparently, with a nightclub. The rest, the re, yeah, the nightclub is uh is attached to it, and it's just called okay. Style. The nightclub Fair is enough. just called Style. Oh, okay. All right. So to make it different, the I see. The the bar or the uh, the place to eat is different. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's fair. Uh, tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. There's the Charles Rower Station. This is the district's transportation hub. The Charles Station is a boarding point for people wishing to take the bullet train to San Francisco. It's also a major heliport with flights to and from SeaTac and all other major helipads in the city. Nice. Did we talk about the bullet train at some point? Because that sounds familiar. We may I'm trying have to mentioned it early on when we started talking about the Metroplex as one of the ways to get into the Seattle Metroplex. Okay. It only goes from Seattle to San Fran. Gotcha. Right. Okay. I remember that it went into California. I was trying to remember. But that... San Fran makes sense. I don't think there's okay. any other stop. It just goes directly. Fair. Okay, cool. Sorry, I was trying to just remember on that one. No, no, it's fine. Uh, and we've got the crying wall. Oh. Can you set a Shadowrun episode on the bullet train? <laughs> Maybe we could do a one-off or something. <laughs> it, it's... To have our own bullet train, bullet train episode. <laughs> hey. Anything goes on the bullet going. train, man. I am uh... <laughs> so great, so great. <laughs> uh, the crying wall is during the infamous night of rage. Thousands of metahumans died in the fires that broke out on the docks of the Tacoma waterfront. After the riots, the survivors decided to erect a monument to those who died. What the orc and dwarf sculptors created was the crying wall, a somber. Tableau 20 meters long and 6 meters high that commemorates the night's terrible events. It is a powerful work of art. The public is invited to view the wall, though the informal contingent of orc guards will tolerate no slights, real or intended, from human visitors. No one spray paints that wall. No one. Fair, dude. Fair enough, man. If if the answer to that is you deal with the orcs, like, nah, I'm good, dude. The impromptu orc guards, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, you have SeaTac Mall, because you've got to have a shopping center. Oh, I can't wait to go to Suncoast at SeaTac Mall. <laughs> buy, my, buy my $65 anime DVD with three episodes on it. <laughs> but think of all the commentary. Bro, you get text list openings and closings. What else do you need, <laughs> dude? It's like a music video. <laughs> uh, there's uh, also the Tacoma Mall. Uh, uh -huh. The Tacoma Mall is the oldest shopping mall in the city. With some buildings dating all the way back to the 1960s. No, nobody was alive back in the 1960s. <laughs> nobody remembers what it looked like. Tear it all down. <laughs> Quaint enough to lack many of the modern conveniences, the mall and its stores are aimed mostly at the area's middle class families. Do you think that people living in the sixth world look at the 1960s lifestyle the way that we look at like the 1930s or 20s? Oh, I was going to say even more like like colonial lifestyle <laughs> like, oh my gosh. like do they think that it's just that far back technology that it's just like it just seems like such a like incomprehensible time frame by modern standards you know i guess i mean <laughs> going to this place to the tacoma mall and not having like data terminal kiosks everywhere 
would probably be a little off off putting. I would assume. Yeah, they only take cash. There's there there's no, <laughs> no no there's nowhere to slot your your cred stick. Yeah, no cred stick machines in the mall. Cash only. Well, the Tacoma Mall has several antique stores that are good places to find pre-awakening curios. Oh. One of them, the Naughty 90s, mm. also sells bootleg computer programs. Hell yeah. Imagine going in and you're like, hey, I heard that you got the stuff. And the guy slides <laughs> you a floppy disk that just says W95 on it. You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> this is uh, what I need. Hey. Come to you because I heard you got that organ trail. <laughs> uh, I was told that you were a man who knew how to uh, sweep for things, particularly <laughs> if I was in the neighborhood to mine for goods, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yo, you got Space Pinball 3D? <laughs> space Pinball. Let's oh my go. Oh my god, let's go. High score, dude. Let's go. You know those bumpers turn green if you hit them enough times? Bro. Yeah, do it. The government buildings in the location, you obviously have the Port of Tacoma Police Station. Yep. Checks out. I would imagine a fire department as well. Uh, Yes. There's also Tacoma District Courthouse, the mm -hmm. District Hall, obviously, the government buildings. But then you also have the Silcox Island Correctional Facility. All right, so my next question was going to be, do they have a prison in Tacoma? But no, they have an island prison. All right, cool, yep. go on. The prison is a tall, mean-looking, 30-story building in the center of Silcox Island. It is reputable to be a hellhole. I like to imagine that it's just like, it literally looks like a big gray cube of a building, but then on the front of the building, it has like a frowny face made out of ironed windows, like barred <laughs> windows. And But he's got like the angry eyebrows as well, and they're like, oh, that's mm -hmm. one mean looking building, I wouldn't want to go in there. Uh, 30 stories. That's, Man. that's a huge prison. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Like, have you ever seen a uh, like a, a stacked prison that's built up. Most prisons that we have in areas are kind of like built out. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's one in, in California. There's one that's built up. There's something about the concept of a, of a vertical prison that just makes it seem that much more terrifying. I don't know what right? it is. But... I think I, <laughs> I, I watched it on, what was that show? like 90 days in or whatever it is where they send normal people into the prison oh yeah 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 they went to this one where it's built vertically and that's that just sounds terrifying the way that the prisoners live in there is like weird they learned that they could like flush the toilets enough to clear them of water and then speak to people that are above them through what the, the pipes and they would pass contraband through the pipes of the toilets. Oh my god. And so you'd end up with a lot of like backups from it being flushed so many times. And so there's areas where sewage would start leaking out on floors oh, and everything. Oh, it was a, no. It was a nightmare. Plus seeing some of these people's faces since you're getting so much stuff through the toilet, like their faces look all jacked up. Oh god. It is not a pretty picture. <laughs> that just sounds terrifying. Like, the concept of having to walk down, like, six flights of stairs to be able to go outside or just stay in prison. Like, Jesus. Here's the fun part. You know how, like, we're talking about with most prisons that are built flat and out have prison yards where you go outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the vertical prisons do not have prison yards that go outside. They have specific rooms that are just concrete rooms with a big... They have a large opening that's covered with a graded fence so you uh -huh. can see outside. Yeah. And that's it. And it's open to the outside through that through that big open window. And you can see, but there's like it's you're still in a room. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like they have a little basketball court that might be set up and some weights out there like you would normally see in some prison yards, but that's it. There's no grass. You can't see the sky other than looking out the window. It's not above you. You're still yeah. in a room. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's what that. makes vertical prison so much more depressing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Ugh. All right. So, island, vertical prison of depression. Yeah. yeah. And it's an oh. island as well. And an Think island. How terrible dude. that is. God. Ugh. You're going to get hit with any of those storms that roll in off the Pacific. Yeah. Imagine a power outage from a hurricane with a backed up contraband sewer line <laughs> oh dude oh no thank you it has to be worth being an island don't go to vertical prison people <laughs> stay stay on stay the straight out. narrow yeah. stay out uh obviously for businesses we said there's the Feder- federated boeing metalworks yep work hard play hard you have the shiawase corporation they have the twin shiawase towers first uh, were the first buildings to rise from the devastation of the Night of Rage. Is it just like a corporate tower? or? Well, they're the two uh, two towers that were built. Its offices handle Shiawase business from most of the Pacific coast, as well as being the site of major cyberware research. The company is known for its mm. high-tech expertise, particularly in cyberware. There right. are several research facilities in Seattle, include the one at the humana hospital in tacoma ah uh, okay so it is just it's like a corporate tower form in a research facility that's cool apparently uh-huh. they are remarkably unconcerned about security as tours are long and thorough they even oh. show you the scout panzers the company used to repel a hostile incursion into one of their factories a few years ago I mean, like, the most sure way that you make sure that people don't try to rob you is, you know, you show them the gun, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here are the tanks that we use to stop the people from breaking in. All right, if we can continue this way. Yeah. <laughs> this is the full facial scan 3D software. You've been scanned and are in the database forever since the moment you walked in our compound. So we know who you are. Uh, like... Right here, right here, this section of floor, you see that slightly darker spot? That is literally where one of the assailants crapped their pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and the tour moves on. <laughs> <laughs> In this way, please, if you will. you got to appreciate a thorough tour. Exactly. Uh, as they said, there's the Humana Hospital. Uh-huh. Uh, large, well-run hospital is operated by the city's health organization, but does get kickbacks from the Shiawase Cyberware Research Division. Right, because they're doing research in the hospital. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. There's also the Doctors' Hospital of Tacoma, which was founded by a group of doctors before the turn of the century. The hospital has always been known for the quality of its orthopedic staff. Then there's the margaret bridge child health hospital the bridge hospital concentrates all its efforts on caring for the city's critically ill children and the hospital has won world renowned for its research into childhood diseases and their effects on meta human children hey let's go metas trying to make the world better for the next generations hell yeah all right other places of interest we're into the miscellaneous area we have fenris knocked I feel like you've mentioned this before. That name seems familiar. I have. I have mentioned it before. Um, in the context of the terrorist organization, Winter Night, who we haven't yes. really talked about yet on on the pod, but it, it is for a future one for sure. Right. This one, this is a nightclub uh-huh. that... At first glance, this place looks more like a primitive cave than a Tacoma nightclub. That is, if you can get in past the armed doorman. Secrecy and privacy are the key words here. Very interesting place. What is it a nightclub for? Or or is it just like a normal nightclub? It is a normal nightclub. It's just the security is extremely tight. Gotcha. And... The fact that it looks like you're walking into a cave and not a nightclub. I mean, that is pretty cool. Right? You have Palace of China nightclub. 
The Palace of China is one of the best nightclubs in Tacoma. Its ornate medieval Chinese decor is popular with the area's wealthy young singles. The club owner is also a skilled mage who often demonstrates elaborate illusions for his patrons. Although they will not admit trolls. Trolls hate magic. No trolls in the Palace of China. Sorry. Uh, Then you have Tacoma Nibbles and Bites. And Bites is spelled B-Y-T-E-S. Yeah, okay. Uh Uh-huh. This store carries excellent computer equipment, as well as a small selection of rare talismans and lore books. Oh. So it's it's literally just a Fry's Electronics. Okay, cool. (laughs) Uh, Both Deckers and Magicians like this store because of the uh, selection that you can get. Yeah, they would like the nerd store where all the nerds go. (laughs) (laughs) The owner is particularly helpful and will sometimes conduct tours of the local matrix for novices or for those that are unfamiliar with the area. Oh, what a guy. What a guy. That place does sound legit, though, though, I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Tacoma Nibbles and Bites. (laughs) Yeah, it's, you know what, a fantastic name like mm-hmm. it good branding and like uh, the, the concept of just like an old school computer part component store but also magic is mm-hmm. like it's just i like it who it's very good why aren't there more of these right who would have oh it? dude that's definitely where our jason born runner has to work during the day right <laughs> uh, he's just like a sales associate at nibbles and bites Wow, I feel like we're going for a a whole Chuck vibe here. <laughs> and then and then he can just work out of the out of Tacoma instead of having to be in Seattle. That'd be a change right? of pe- dude. All right, <laughs> I'm filing this down for future okay. reference. Fantastic. Nibbles and bites. <laughs> then we have Zelensky's Electronics. It's a medium store and body shop. Zelensky's is a front for a small body shop run by one Dr. Margaret Carruthers, who does a lot of work altering local Yakuza street samurai. Okay, so that was going to answer my next question. (laughs) Which was? When you say a body shop, do you mean for a car, or do you mean like augmentation body shop? Mm, Okay. So most of the time when you hear the term body shop in the sixth world, assume it means for your literal body augmentation and stuff yes, see okay and here's the means augmentation here's the problem though is that that nickname is close enough to be either but so is the alternative because the alternative would be to call it a chop shop mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure in cyberpunk 2077 the chop shop is what they call the augmentation place <laughs> <laughs> and so it just it, it all comes back around <laughs> Right? You can't escape it. (laughs) Just don't drive cars in your cyberpunk reality, and it makes it way easier for the rest of us. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Because also, with there being the abundance of go gangs in the area, it would make sense that a body shop could be where they get the bikes worked on. I'm just just saying. We need better slang. (laughs) We need we need we need more slang. Here we go. What would be your alternative name to a body augmentation shop? If you had to come up with a slang name for a body shop, quote unquote, <laughs> what would you what would you quote call them? Unquote. Well, no, I meant a body shop. Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a chop shop or body shop, right? Mm-hmm. Another mm. slang term a la chop shop or body shop, but mm-hmm. that is not those, so we can get away from, from the issue. Uh, I, I mean, I'd go with the the tried and true i call it an organ grinder an organ grinder okay yeah, not bad yeah. not bad i like it i would go i was trying to think of either auger or augie mm. and just have it spelled stand for augment mm-hmm. but i think auger sounds more cool guy cyberpunky but augie's just funny gotta go see my augie my legs are acted up <laughs> You can't, it's one of those words where you can't sound tough when you say it. Right. It's somewhat disarming, which that's makes true. sense because he works at a chop shop. Oh, wow. Augies, that's what we're calling them. <laughs> if, you, if you guys out there need a new slang term for your uh, chop shop purveyors, <laughs> call them organ grinders or call them Augies. Let us know. 
Uh, I do have a little bit of an update for the Fenris Noct nightclub. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go there, make sure you're invited. Ah, So it's almost like a speakeasy. Got to be on the list. Apparently, it is also a popular location with urban shapeshifters. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sorry. I think I may have missed it earlier when you were talking about it. Are they associated with the terrorist group? Or is this just no, a they're not. It's just happenstance, the name. Okay, I get you. Yes. Oh. Just happenstance, not actually associated with the terrorist organization. Fair. I hope that they have that on the outside of the building. That's also <laughs> supposed to be an inconspicuous building that you're not supposed to know is the super cool nightclub. Right. Uh, that's a weird plaque, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a super conspicuous nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> it just happens to be similar to name. We are in no way associated with terrorists. Well, this seems like a fun building. What's going on in here? <laughs> well, when we talk about uh, Winter Night, you realize how secretive they actually were. So it wasn't. Fair. they weren't widely known. Fair. For some reason, okay, in my in my I, I'm actually really excited to talk about Winter Night because mm-hmm. they're they're like one of the organizations in this lore that I am super interested in mm-hmm. based on what I know that they've already done. But in my brain, I imagine them as being the terrorist bad guys from the first triple X movie. I keep imagining them as Anarchy 99 and it's <laughs> it's so much better to me that like it's it's all like European new metal dudes that are like the, this like super <laughs> like viking obsessed terrorist organization. I don't know there's uh-huh, something about uh-huh. it. I'm just like yeah. Oh okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> also some quick more information about the spikes. The all troll go gang that control Inner City 5. Mm. The Spikes are founded by the infamous elf hater Lord Torgo. I mean, at least he's, you know, royalty. I mean, self-proclaimed. It's, uh... Do you mean to tell me that Prince wasn't actually a prince? I hate to break this to you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And Lord Torgo was definitely a specimen among trolls. Uh-huh. And that he was bigger and tougher than your average troll. <laughs> Okay, uh-huh. And smarter than the average bear, they say. That They say. Uh, <laughs> however, he was imprisoned for murder. Uh, see, you gotta be smart enough to not get caught, is the other part. Uh, uh-huh, the... uh-huh. yeah. And uh, his leadership was challenged by other gang members who were more interested in making new yen than killing elves. You know what? I can appreciate that change in direction. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're like, wouldn't it be easier if we just, like, robbed people? Yeah, man, like anybody. Anybody with money. We just want the money. <laughs> so, uh, eventually he dies in prison. Lord okay. Torgo does. I was gonna and... say, notice you were mentioning a lot of past tense there. Yeah, Yes, well, he dies in prison. Uh-huh. And the leadership of the gang is then taken over by a minotaur. Dope. Apparently with purple-colored fur. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. And he calls himself BTO. Okay, you know that we love a good acronym on this show, Easy. Uh, uh-huh. What do you think it stands for? B-T-O. You're definitely not going to get it, I promise. Okay. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, my guess is biggest, toughest offender. That's a good one. That, that's okay. good. That's uh-huh. good. I, I don't think that... I think you'll be surprised what it actually stands for. Okay, I am very right. interested. Are you ready? Uh-huh. This Minotaur, B-T-O... The short form of Babe the Ox. Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, but he's purple. Yeah, he's purple. He should be blue. Ah, uh, he's purple. Oh, okay. You know what? I love it. I'm down with it still. This is I, as as you said that it was taken over by a Minotaur, I was just like, yo, a Minotaur on a motorcycle is a terrifying concept for some reason. Right? And I think it's because it's like, imagine if you got, like, <laughs> getting into an accident with a Minotaur would be mm-hmm. just devastating. <laughs> it's like hitting three moose at the same time. <laughs> that's, that's probably true. Well, the other thing that makes it probably so intimidating is when you say motorcycle. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going to think of, like, the racing motorcycles that you see or the... Yeah. Or like a or or like a chopper, right? Like a yeah. We want to go chopper. We're going old school, 
like old school Harleys. But to be modified to fit a Minotaur, like that motorcycle or a troll, would, yeah, yeah, that motorcycle yeah. would be like would be like three and a half feet, four feet tall. Like yes. they would be so be massive. Huge. And now think of a gang of them running, just running down Inner City Five. Fair man, you know what? Let them have it, dude. I don't think anybody... <laughs> I, you can't stop that gang. That's so crazy. It's not contested. I mean, dude, the, an- who the ancients would, are man? the ancients are the only ones that tangle with the spikes the most but uh, i think that that's ah, just yeah. the uh i think that that's just the elf and former elf hater rivalry still kind of playing out there right maybe yeah and to let you know that currently in our timeline of sinless uh-huh lord togo is still in charge okay in the in in our current timeline that we're using but in the future not not so much right yeah yeah so yes. did, i did, did his like did he get killed in prison by somebody challenging the leadership? Is that what it was? Or he he died in isolation. Oh, okay. Well, that's Yeah. He doesn't play nice with the other inmates, so they just threw him in an isolation cell and he eventually died there. Damn. Yeah. Sucks to suck. What, dude. A, what a terrible way to go. Dude, that's uh yeah. You know what? Fair enough, man. Guy sounded kind of like an asshole, so you know what? <laughs> <laughs> just constantly hating elves didn't want it's, to do anything else just you kill know, elves yeah so i don't know fucking sounds like i'm all right <laughs> yeah i mean to get into the spikes uh new recruits don't earn their place and in the gang until they kill an elf oh my god any elf doesn't matter just gotta kill one elf got some elf hate going the initiation group is just like watching him from like around the corner of a building and they're just like hey crime hey crime hey crime. <laughs> <laughs> Just chanting on their bikes. Huh, I wonder why the ancients still have this weird grudge with them. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I couldn't put it together. No idea. Jesus. Maybe you could tell me. (laughs) That will uh that will put Seattle at a or Seattle. That'll put Tacoma at a glance right there. Seems like a interesting place to live. It seems honestly like it would be as equally of an interesting setting to actually put or to set like a Shadowrun campaign in. Just in Tacoma. Yeah, I think Tacoma could be dope by its own. You've got yeah. the whole mafia integration already there. You've got Corpo presence. Mm-hmm. You've got, you got the mafia docks. versus yaks. You have all the docks, everything that comes in. You know, smuggling's got to be huge. Yeah. So yeah, you could run in a really in-depth, crazy campaign completely contained within Tacoma pretty easily. Seems like a dope place. It's a large section of the Metroplex, too. Yeah, no, for sure. I it's the second largest city behind Seattle, right? For, uh yes. For for Shadowrun. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, uh Puyallup has more area than Tacoma, but a lot of that is lava field and unlivable, so that doesn't yeah, no, really population but, density wise. It doesn't sure count. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tacoma definitely wins the population battle there. Yes. So yeah, it seems dope. I I, I kinda like I like the concept of Tacoma because I feel like you could do a lot more like interesting campaign settings there. Mm-hmm. Some town or like with even I mean the Barons I kind of just associate with downtown Seattle in terms of being like of the same location type, mm-hmm. and it just feels like you're just doing like the 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 cyberpunk city setting. But Tacoma sounds like sounds like it has so much more interesting potential than just that mm-hmm. that you could really get into. It's cool. I really like it. Yeah, and plus Tacoma borders the downtown area as well. So yeah, so if like you need to go to away. Seattle, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's cool. It seems like a dope place, easy, and I like it. I th- I honestly think if I was stuck in the Metroplex, uh, I would probably be living in Tacoma. That's very fair. Uh, I. Also, just like that there's, like, nothing really bad happened in Tacoma. Like, mm-hmm. there's no real kind of down negative stuff with Tacoma. Except, like, except, except for... the Night of it, Rage, you Okay, know? except for it being where the Night of Rage took place. However, <laughs> however, okay. however, in spite of that, it uh-huh. is also very much, like, a very meta-positive area of the metroplex it sounds like which is well cool. i think that it is just because they want to try harder to erase that stain of 
the race riot uh, <laughs> from their history so hey, you know under understandable but if it means that it actually ends up being a better place to live for metas fuck yeah dude yeah there's lots of meta integration i mean you'll still run into the occasional place that won't allow certain meta types into their location but you'll get that anywhere in the metroplex so yeah yeah that sounds cool. I like Tacoma. But again, like I was saying, outside of the night <laughs> the night of the rage, night of rage, right? Like everything else about it's just like, yeah, this is pretty cool. It seems yeah, pretty dope, yeah. like a pretty dope place. Oh, uh, one bad thing. It just has the most inhospitable prison complex that I can imagine. Hey, just don't go to prison. We talked about this. Don't do crime. <laughs> don't it's not do worth crime. it. Don't do crime. Oh. If the answer is vertical prison, don't do crime. Fantastic. Oh man. Well, that's that's all I got. You, you have anything else you'd like to add about Tacoma? I do not, except that I do think that that is going to be uh, the location for our uh, for our undercover runner. <laughs> I, I think it, I think a Tacoma with him would be way more fun. Okay as well That's, so that yeah, sounds that's... good that sounds good well all right it's a good time yay good tacoma time. yay tacoma all right you guys have heard it here so let us know would you also be living in the tacoma area or has anything else that we've talked about this evening also sparked your interest to create some new unique shadow run runners i definitely really want to look into doing that paracritter Projectile Nova Possum is TM critical hits. So I'm just <laughs> sorry. Put that out there. Sorry about your luck, guys. It's yeah, it's already anybody that was thinking of using it, uh, you owe us money, first and mm. foremost. <laughs> Secondly, not allowed. So we'll take your new yen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, all right, guys. I hope you have enjoyed your evening with us. And as always, we want to thank you for tuning in. And of course, we will catch you guys on the next one. The Tops Company Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Tops Company Inc. has granted permission to Critical Hits to use such names, logos, artwork, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Critical Hits in any official capacity whatsoever.